to God uh, is eternal life. Uh, you got to repent of all your sin. But the Bible separates the people of the world in three classes of people. Jews, Samaritans, and Gentiles. Now, of course, a Gentile is anybody that's not a Jew. Praise the Lord. So if you are not a Jew on a day, you are a Gentile. The Samaritans were a group of people. They were mixed Jews. That in the book of Kings, it's recorded that uh, because the nation of Israel rebelled so against God that God sent prophets to them to prophesy to them, to tell them uh, that they needed to repent or judgment was coming. And of course, uh, many of the prophets that they received, they killed them. They came bringing the message of God to try to get them to turn from the evil ways so that the wrath of God would not come upon them, and they killed them. And so the Lord allowed the Assyrian king, I think his name was Shalamanzer, to come in uh, and to take Israel captive. You see, Israel, the nation of Israel, was split at that time because uh, when Solomon, David's son, the wisest man that ever lived, backslid, uh, God told him that he was going to split his kingdom as a punishment uh, and that his son would reap some of the punishments of his father Solomon. And God spared Solomon from a lot of his wrath because of Solomon's father David. And that's what the Lord told him. He said, for my servant David's sake, I'm not going to allow some things to come upon you, but they're going to be reaped um, through your son Rehoboam. And so when Solomon died, Rehoboam took over. The kingdom was split. Uh, ten tribes um, revolted uh, and left. Uh, and then you had two tribes, which was Judah and Benjamin. That was considered Judah. And the ten tribes was considered Israel. But God sent prophets uh, to Israel to the ten tribes and he sent prophets to Judah which was the two tribes and so keep in mind that uh, as we talk about Israel separating them from Judah uh, they refused to obey the commandments of God and so God allowed the Assyrian king to come in to Israel and take the ten tribes into slavery and he carried them over until Assyria and those Israelites that were Jews intermarried with the Assyrians and they became Samaritans. And this is what you have uh, the Samaritan woman here in our text. Samaritan is a half Jew, half Samaritan. And of course, 125 years later, uh, because the two tribes, Judah, refused to heed the call of God, God allowed Nebuchadnezzar Amen. The king of Babylon to come down and take them captive. Uh, praise the Lord. Can we say amen? You see, people don't realize that uh, God is also a God of judgment and also a God of wrath. You see, a lot of people have mistaken uh, God. They have misunderstood God. God's love and his grace and his mercy, uh, because of it, because it's so great, Many men and women have misunderstood that to think that God is all love and nothing else. That God is all grace and nothing else. That God is all mercy and nothing else. Nothing can be further from the truth. Amen. God has anger. The Bible says he's angry with the wicked. How often? Every day. Amen. God has wrath. God has judgment. Amen. We know that concern is wrath because in the days of Noah, he told Noah that he's going to allow the flood of the waters to come and that he's going to destroy man off the face of the earth. Why? Because of his evilness, because of sin. It's one thing that God hates. God hates sin. Can we say amen? It's the thing that he hates the most. He hates sin. Sin has no part of God's nature. And so many times because God is so merciful and so loving and so gracious, Men have misunderstood the fact that they think that that's all he is. And that therefore that he is a God that cannot punish. That he is a God that cannot extend his wrath. That he is a God that will not uh, uh, make man pay for his actions. But nothing can be further from the truth. 
He has demonstrated oftentimes in the scripture concerning his judgment against sin and his judgment and his wrath aiming upon men. And I want you to know that God is angry with all of the things that are going on in this world. Can we say amen? Amen. When you look at some of the things that are going on in this world, make you angry. Don't you think God is angry also? Amen. Where do you think we got that anger component from? God is angry today. And anger is not something that is necessarily a bad thing. Amen. Because the scripture says that God is angry with the wicked what? Every day. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so, praise God. When we see the conditions, the world conditions that affects us, amen, it causes us to be angry because things ought to be better. Children ought to be treated better. Some of you all that work with children in schools and you see children come to school uh, uh, not properly clothed and, and praise the Lord, not properly fed and they depend upon the school lunches, the school breakfasts that uh, the school provides because in many cases the children don't eat at home because there's no food to eat at home. Amen. Whether it is because the mother that has a, a, a reckless and at-risk behavior put the children in jeopardy and, and so they come to school many times to get relief or sometimes they come to school and act out what's going on at home. Amen. And this frustrates the teachers and the administrators because, amen, they are not there just because it's a job. They're there because they want to make a difference in the life of children. Can, am I speaking the same? Am I speaking the right thing? And so understand then that, praise God, this is frustrating. It makes, makes them angry when we see the things that are going on on television and how people's lives are being torn up and how there's so much injustice and amen by those that are in the position to execute justice they are some of the main ones that are uh, showing forth giving out injustices these things make us angry but they make God angry also can the church say amen amen as much as that he gives man breath to breathe and and strength to go about to do his daily activities and give him the uses of the limbs of his body and walk on his earth and breathe his air and eat his food and drink his water and yet is still a man just thumbs himself, uh, thumbs his nose up at God and refuses to acknowledge him and refuses to serve him and ex uh, refuses to walk with him, refuses to give their life unto him when he has given his life. Praise God as Jesus Christ. Don't you think that's something that wouldn't make God angry? Can the church say amen? Amen. So make no mistake, and many of the people of the world are mistaken God. They have a misunderstanding of God. He is a God of judgment. He is a God of wrath. Amen. And the people of this world are going to find out one day. Amen. When he pours out the cup of his indignation, when he comes, amen, as a lion to roar from heaven to execute his wrath upon this evil world for the evilness, you know, God has to avenge, amen, the blood of the saints that have been spilled, amen, over the centuries that are, people are being killed right now. They don't have the privilege that you and I have to sit here in church and to hear the word of God, to sing freely, amen, to clap our hands, to preach the word, amen. Thank God we are in a country where we can actually thank God. Can the church say amen? There are being people being killed every day amen, in other parts of the world. And don't you think that doesn't make God angry? Oh, yeah, he's going to come to avenge the blood amen, of the 60-plus millions of Christians that have been martyred for their testimony of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that when the Lord comes and takes his church out of the earth, that this world is going to become a satanic world, that the devil is going to have full control because God's going to take his church take his people out of this world. Holy Spirit will be taken out of the world. Amen. Except being upon two men that will be preaching. Amen. Over there in that part of the world for the salvation of those. Amen. That will not take the mark of the beast. Amen. To believe on their preaching. Can the church say amen? Well, I want you to understand that this world is going to be completely satanic when God allows the devil to have free course in this world by him taking the church out of here. We are the ones that are holding back the powers of darkness, amen, from completely destroying and having their way in this world. 
Amen. Don't ever underestimate the power of your prayers when you pray for somebody. Amen. Can the church say amen? There's a whole lot of folk alive today. Amen. Because of your prayers. Because you talking to God in behalf of people. Amen. That don't want to serve God. That you don't want to see lost. That you want to see saved. Amen. That's why the songwriter says, saints, don't stop praying because the Lord is nigh. Don't you let yourself be fooled for a moment. Don't you allow the devil to trick you and make you think that God is not hearing your prayers. Amen. He hears every prayer. Amen. That you pray. Come on and clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Because if we weren't praying, this world would not be, uh, it would be far worse than what it is right now. If we were not praying and worshiping and coming in here talking to God and fasting and singing the praises of God, that's the only thing that is holding the wrath of God back. But once he removes the church out of the world, there will be nothing here to hold him back. And this world is going to be a completely satanic world. And if anybody, amen, has any kind of mind to worship God after his church is gone, their life is going to be in trouble because the devil's going to make sure, amen, that people, if they call on the name of the Lord, that they're going to die, that he's going to kill them. Amen. I wonder y'all hearing me on this morning. And that's why I'm preaching to you to let you know you don't want to be here. Amen. During that time, you need to get saved and get ready to see Jesus when he comes. Uh, so that when the rapture take place and the Lord stands in the heavens and says, come up here. Amen. You can get up. Uh, amen. And be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. And get out of this world because there's trouble. There's doom. There's, amen, the rapture of God that is coming. Can the church say amen? Even those that are in their graves that are sleeping in Christ. Amen. When Jesus stands in the heavens and say, come up here. Amen. When that time comes and that time can come at any time. Can the church say amen? Amen. The graves, those will be coming up out of the graves and God's going to clothe them with a glorified body. And those of us that are alive at the time when the rapture takes place, the Holy Ghost that is inside of us, according to the Bible, is going to cause our body to instantaneously dissolve. Amen. And God is going to instantaneously clothe us with a body from heaven. And the Holy Ghost that is inside of us is going to catapult us up to heaven. Because when the church is raptured, God has taken the Holy Ghost out, amen, of this world. That's why we tell you, you got to have the Holy Ghost. You got to have it. Hallelujah. Because I heard one preacher say, you can't fly to heaven without the Holy Ghost. But once you get it, amen, and get it like the Bible said. Can the church say amen? Not like some preacher said, but like the Bible said, then you'll be ready to fly. Even when the Lord says fly, when the Lord says come up here, you'll have the power that will bring this flesh into amen, back to its original state and clothed with a glorified body and God will catapult us up and we will leave this world. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm working for. That's what I'm living for. Turn us down a little bit. That's what I'm praying for. That's what I'm working for because I mean to see Jesus for myself. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes. Uh, praise the Lord. Come on and say hallelujah. Uh, amen. Praise God. So, amen. Uh, God is a God of wrath. He's a God of judgment. Uh, and praise God, we come upon this story in St. John chapter 4. Praise God. It is a story that involves Jesus conversing with a Samaritan woman. Now, the Jews considered, amen, Samaritans as unclean people because the Jews only considered, praise God, those that were Jews to be people, amen, that were of God. And they looked at Gentiles or anybody that was not a full-fledged Jew, amen, as dogs, as unclean. Can the church say amen? And so there was so much uh, a, a racial prejudice from the Jews against the Samaritans. Praise God that when they wanted to travel, amen, and needed to go through Samaria, they had so much hostility and animosity against the Samaritans that they would, amen, go hundreds of miles around Samaria just to avoid to go through the land of Samaria. But if you notice in St. John chapter 4, 
Amen. In verse number four, it says that Jesus must needs to go through Samaria. Can the church say amen? Amen. He did not allow the uh, uh, racial tensions and hostilities of the Jews to prevent him from doing what God would have him to do. And the Bible lets us know that, amen, as we read on in the chapter, that we find out why he needed to go through Samaria. Can the church say amen? Amen. And, and, and we should realize that, amen, he was a God that did not have any respect to persons. Amen. We should not, amen, be afraid of anybody because of what race they are. We should not look down upon people because of what color they are or because of what happened in the past. Those that are looking in the past cannot see where they're going into the future. Can the church say amen? Jesus said no man looking back is fit for the kingdom of heaven. God is not a God that we should focus on what happened in the past but what are you doing in the present and where are you going amen into the future and the church shout hallelujah and so he did not allow the political correctness of his time to dictate what he was to do for God praise God so he the Bible says he needed to go through Samaria and he came to a city amen of Samaria which is called Sychar near to the partial ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. You see in the in the book of Genesis chapter 33 amen after Jacob had uh, met up with Esau praise God and we all know the story of Jacob how Jacob amen uh, received the father's blessing by dressing up and impersonating himself as Esau. Esau was the eldest son that was supposed to get the birthright blessing the right hand blessing from his father Isaac but Esau had sold his birthright praise God and so he had sold it to Jacob but he still wanted to keep it the birthright was the blessing from the father the patriarch amen that he would lay his hands on the eldest son and praise God and pronounce blessings upon him and God would uh, 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 would, would back up uh, amen those blessings can we say amen but it was always prophesied by uh, amen God to Jacob and Esau's mother amen Rebecca that when she was pregnant that she had hard labor and the Lord as she went to God to find out why she was having uh, such a hard time in a pregnancy uh, the Lord told her two nations are in your womb and amen the elder will serve the younger and so praise God Esau who was the elder and Jacob was the younger Esau by birth had the right to the right hand blessing uh, but the Bible says he cared so little about the right hand blessing uh, amen that he sold it to his brother for a pot of beans uh, that's what your Bible said can we say amen praise God uh, amen and so uh, Amen. As he realized the value of the birthright, uh, amen, he wanted to get it back. But Jacob uh, went in through the counsel of his mother, uh, amen, and uh, amen, dressed himself as if he was Esau. Uh, and because Isaac's sight was so bad and uh, he has lost pretty much uh, all of the five senses that he had, uh, did not recognize that Jacob was uh, that, 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 that Jacob was not Esau. Uh, and the church shall hallelujah. And so he went in there and laid hands on him and got the blessing. Uh, and Esau went in and realized uh, that Jacob had so-called stolen the blessing. Uh, amen. There was animosity between the two brothers for years. Uh, but in the 19th chapter of Genesis, uh, amen, they meet up. Uh, and Jacob had been praying that he didn't want his brother to kill him. Uh, and the church shout hallelujah. Amen. And so when they met up, uh, God gave Jacob favor with his brother Esau and the relationship was reestablished again. Uh, amen. And so where they uh, had came together, uh, amen, Jacob decided that he was going to build a well uh, and build an altar uh, and dedicate that altar and that well, uh, amen, to the God, uh, amen, that blessed him there. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, Amen. Now, 1900 years later, uh, amen, as we come upon the story of Jesus, uh, back then that land uh, was part of Canaan, uh, but now it is uh, called Samaria. Uh, come on and shout hallelujah. Uh, and praise God as uh, Jesus, that's why he needed to go uh, through Samaria. Uh, 
amen, because he was the God that blessed Jacob 1900 years ago uh, to build that well and to build that altar. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. There's a lesson in that. We're going to get to it. Uh, praise God. And so he comes through Samaria. Uh, Amen. I've been tired traveling, been tired. Uh, he had got done witnessing to Nicodemus. Uh, Amen. In the third chapter of the book of St. John. Uh, Amen. And praise God, he was tired from his journey. Uh, and so they stopped at this well called Jacob's Well. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, amen. And then there came a woman of Samaria. Uh, amen. With her water pot uh, to draw water out of this well. Uh, which is about 35 feet deep. Uh, amen. That was the profession of the women back in those days. Uh, amen. When they needed water, they were the ones uh, that went to the well. Uh, amen. To draw water out of the well. Uh, praise God. And so while Jesus was there uh, at Jacob's well, uh, meeting that woman of Samaria, uh, according to Jewish custom, he was not supposed to talk with her, that woman. Uh, that woman was unclean. Uh, he was not supposed to have any conversation uh, with that woman. Uh, but the Bible said he needed to go uh, through Samaria. Uh, come on and shout hallelujah. Uh, and so while he was there talking uh, to this Samaritan woman, uh, praise God, the Bible lets us know, uh, amen, that Jesus asked her, I want you to give me a drink. Uh, you see, because he had nothing to draw the water out with. Uh, amen. And the woman said, uh, Amen. Uh, the Bible says, Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him. Uh, notice the Bible places emphasis on the fact uh, that she was uh, so a woman of Samaria. Uh, him the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, how is it that thou, being a Jew, uh, asketh drink of me, uh, which am a woman of Samaria? Uh, but the Jews have no dealings uh, with the Samaritans. Uh, you see, they had so much hostility. Uh, I guess the Samaritans, uh, amen, that they were not even to talk to a Samaritan, uh, let alone a male Jew uh, talking to a female Samaritan, uh, amen, they were not even a drink uh, out of the same cup of a Samaritan, uh, they were not even a handle uh, the same utensils of a Samaria, uh, but Jesus says to her, uh, give me something to drink, uh, and the church clap there and shout hallelujah, hallelujah, and the woman said, uh, amen, you, uh, what are you doing talking to me? Uh, you had no business talking to me. Uh, amen. They're talking about giving you a drink. Uh, but I heard the Lord. You see, uh, Jesus needed to go through Samaria because uh, there was a woman he was going to witness to uh, and testify with. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto her, if thou knewest the gift of God, uh, and who it is that saith to thee, uh, give me to drink, uh, you would ask me to give you something to drink. Uh, and I would have given you uh, some living water. Uh, come on and shout hallelujah. Uh, you see, that's the thing that God does. Uh, see, he had Jacob build that well uh, way back 1900 years ago. Uh, amen. And that well was very beneficial. Uh, amen. To the public of those that would be traveling. Uh, to stand there and get a drink of water. Uh, hey, but that wasn't the real reason uh, why that well was built. Because uh, the same God that blessed Jacob uh, with his brother Esau uh, had him dig that well. Uh, had him dedicate that altar. Uh, because he, as Jesus Christ, uh, was going to come 1900 years later. Uh, rest at the well. Uh, talk to a woman he shouldn't be talking to. Uh, asking her for something he shouldn't be asking her. So that he can tell her about some living water. Uh, come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Oh, yes. Uh, hey, man, this church was built uh, in 1898. Uh, and when they built this church, uh, it was built to be a Methodist church. Uh, Amen. It had been a Methodist church. Uh, various denominations over the years. Uh, Amen. They built this church. Uh, Amen. Laid the cornerstone uh, out there in front of the building. Uh, and I want to let you know uh, the only reason why God had them build this church. Because uh, he knew. Uh, Amen. In 1998, uh, Bible Way would be here. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, he knew way back then. Uh, 
Amen. That there will be a, an apostolic church. Amen. He being here. Amen. So he let them build it. He gave them the strength. Because he knew that we would need a place to come and worship. Way back there. While they were laying brick by brick. God was saying, that's my church. You can call it a Methodist church if you want to. You can call it a Presbyterian church if you want to. But in 1998, and the church, hallelujah, a hundred years later, I'm going to put my name there. I'm going to put my power there. And I'm going to bring folk from all over. And they're going to be talking about it in 2016. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. What am I saying? You never know what God has in store for you. Don't be worried about what you're going through. Don't be worried about what's happening. God is in control of your life. You don't know what's going to happen on tomorrow. You don't realize what you're doing now. It's setting the foundation uh, for God to step in uh, somewhere down the line. Uh, so like the songwriter said, uh, onward, uh, Christian soldier, uh, marching as to war uh, with the cross of Jesus. Uh, going on before, uh, hang on in there, uh, hang on in there, uh, hang on in there. Uh, Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Ha. Come on and say hallelujah. Ha. Oh yeah, God knew we'd be here. Ha. He knew this church would be here. Ha. And the church shout hallelujah. Ha. Amen. And so Jesus is talking about, ha. amen, living water. Ha. Amen. There are many wells in the Bible. Ha. There's about 28 verses ha. that deals with wells in the Bible. Ha. And all of those wells uh, were dug by men uh, uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and there was one well uh, that hasn't been dug by man. Uh, and that's the well uh, that Isaiah talked about uh, in Isaiah chapter 12 uh, uh, and verse number 3. Uh, uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and uh, uh, as he talked about the well, uh, uh, he speaks in uh, verse number two. Uh, uh, he said, Behold, God uh, is my salvation. Uh, I will trust uh, and be not afraid. Uh, for the Lord Jehovah uh, is my strength. Uh, and the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and my song, uh, he also is uh, become my salvation. Uh, Therefore, with joy shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation in the church. Hallelujah. There's another well. It's God's well, and it's got living water in it. Come on and see. Yeah. I know that they're having a hard time down in the city of Flint. And we seem to see it uh, for the last two years. Uh, they call it the water crisis. Uh, in the church, uh, hallelujah. Uh, and the cry of Flint, Michigan uh, is that we don't have uh, in clear drinking water. Uh, amen. And we sympathize with them. Uh, uh, there's another well uh, uh, that Flint needs. Uh, they need more than just clear drinking water. Uh, they need uh, some living water. Ha. Come on and say yeah. Say yeah. Ha. And I'm here to tell you, ha. not only is Flint ha, starving for water, ha. but Bay City ha, is starving for water. Ha. They think they're all right because the pipes look good. Ha. They think they're all right because the water coming from that tap ha, gets tested uh, and there's no foreign object uh, uh, oh yes that water uh, amen will get going uh, you'll be thirsty again uh, come on and see yeah. uh, like Jesus told the Samaritan woman uh, uh, oh yes uh, you can drink from Jacob's well uh, you'll get thirsty again uh, uh, but I got some water uh, 
And if you drink of, you will never thirst again. Come on and say, yeah. I heard the Lord say in St. John 7, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. What you talking about, preacher? I'm not talking about the pure. I'm not talking about Sam's best. What I'm talking about is the Holy Ghost. Come on and say, yeah. Say, yeah. Come on and say, yeah. That's the water the world needs. But as he was talking to the Samaritan woman, he told her about her life. And she was so shocked at how much he knew about her life. Bible tell me she dropped a water pot, ran into the city. God turned her into an evangelist. And what did she say? Come see a man that told me all I ever did. This is the Christ. Come on and say, yeah. How did she know he was the Christ? Because I heard Jesus tell her about his water. The woman said, well, I know when the Messiah comes, he will tell us all these things. Clap your hand and say, yeah. Say, yeah. The Messiah will tell us all these things. And this is the only instance in the gospel where Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Come on and say, yeah. The woman got excited, ran out, and said, the Messiah is by Jacob's well. The Messiah is right here. And they came out to see Jesus. And in my closing, you got to go out and tell the world Jesus is here. How do you know he lives inside of me? Let me tell you my story. I was lost. Jesus found me. Put his arms, arms all around me. I was a wretch, undone. But Jesus gave me some water. And the water saved my soul. The water healed me from cancer. The water took me off of drugs. The water changed my life. I'm here to say, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the real water crisis. The real water crisis is folk are not getting the, amen, Jesus is water. Come on and say it. Just as bad as the water crisis was down there in Flint, that's how it is throughout the whole world. See, God uses a lot of natural illustrations to show us what's going on spiritually. The world needs this living water. Every city is dying of thirst. Every city, every person needs this water. And God has it for anybody that wants to receive it. All you have to do is have your mind. On my own terms, I'm going to go down in water in Jesus' name. I'm going to submit myself to go down in water in Jesus' name so that Jesus can fill me with his 
living water. And when you get filled with his living water, you will begin to speak with other tongues. That's spirit. You know, I don't care what some preachers say. They lie. <laughs> you see, he says, if any man thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. St. John 7, 37, verse 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, that is his innermost being, shall flow rivers of living water. And when a person comes to God for salvation, they repent. We take them down in Jesus' name. God begins to pour. Their soul is the cup. God begins to pour his water into the individual. That's them feeling the presence of God. And as it continues to pour, when you pour water in a cup, you keep on pouring, what's going to happen? Cup's going to overflow. You're going to have water everywhere. Can you say amen? So when God pours out his water in the individual, he keeps on pouring, keeps on pouring. Pretty much it overflows, and it overflows. How we know it's overflowing is that the person begins to speak in other tongues. Water's overflowing so much that they start talking a language they ain't never heard, never learned, never studied, but they know it's God. Why? Because they can feel the water all over them. Can we say amen? And some preacher going to tell you, you don't have to have it. You can get the Holy Ghost without speaking in tongues. No, that's not, that, that, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> Just like no more, you go out and buy shoes with no tongue in them. Can we say amen? Every pair of shoes comes with the tongue. Is that right? <laughs> that's how the Holy Ghost comes. Because the speaking in tongues is the demonstration that the person is overflowed with the living water. The living water. So, God needed to go through Samaria. Can we say amen? <laughs> because he had Jacob build that well. <clears throat> and he dedicated it to God. Because he knew that 1900 years later, he was going to be stopping by and talking to a Samaritan woman about the living water. That's an example to us. Don't be afraid to talk to folk about Jesus. If they tell you they don't want to hear it, then just move on and tell somebody else. Can we say amen? Somebody else. Don't matter what color they are. Tell them anyway. Can we say amen? The reason why some of our churches are segregated, and when I say that, all black or all white is because the people are only talking among the people of their own uh, color. Jesus talked to the Samaritan woman. We say amen. The Samaritan woman. He talked to a Samaritan. Number two, it was a woman. But he wanted to introduce her to the water that he had. And when he told her about that water, told her about that life, she went out to the men, and the men came out of the city to Jesus. That's how it works. If we do the same thing, the same thing will happen here at Bible Way. Can we say amen? This church is only 17 plus years old, but it can still happen. We don't have to be in existence for 40 and 50 and 60 years like other churches to get there. We can get to that level at this stage if we work and allow God to use us to tell somebody <coughs> about our salvation. And they may not get saved right then. They may not come then, but at least you told them. At least you did what God saved you to do. Can we say amen? Now, anybody that has not had the baptismal Holy Ghost experience, it's for you. All you have to do is repent and believe. This is what the Bible says. You don't have to have a perfect knowledge of the Bible to get the Holy Ghost. None of us have a perfect knowledge of the Bible. We still don't. I've been preaching for 36 years. I don't have a perfect knowledge of the Bible. Nobody can have a perfect knowledge <coughs> of the Bible. Some that may know more than others, but nobody can have a perfect knowledge of the Bible because the Bible is the word of God and Jesus is the word. How are you going to have a full, complete, perfect knowledge of the infinite God when we are uh, finite? You say amen. <clears throat> but this spreads beyond denominationalism. See, we've gotten so denominational today. So denominational. I'm a Catholic.
do you have the water? That's the only thing I want to know. Can we say amen? I don't care if you're a Muslim or, or whatever or atheist. Do you have the water? Do you want the water? Because I know you're thirsty. There's a whole lot of folk in this world, in this city, that's thirsty, thirsting for God, that want to know God for themselves. And we have the message. Can we say amen? We have what it takes. You'd be surprised what God can do through you if you just let him use you. You'd be shocked. I never thought that I'd be up here pastoring a church. <laughs> never, th never thought that in my mind. Never thought in my mind I'd be up here pastoring a church. I never passed a church before. I never pretty much started anything before. <laughs> but I was with the God that started everything, though, so that was good enough. You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised what God can do through little old you if you just let him use you. Praise the Lord. So if you have not been baptized in Jesus' name, Praise the Lord. Today is your day. Thanks for watching Light for Living with Pastor Raider.